Welcome to a Kytor Industries tutorial. This is part two of my four-part series on creating the Ultimate AV Famicom, the Japanese equivalent to the top-loading NES. In the last video, we went through and we recapped this board with some fresh electrolytic capacitors and installed a new voltage regulator to give us a little extra clean 5-volt electron juice. This video, I'm going to take you through how to install the AV Famicom Audio Balance Restoration Mod. This design comes to us from Master Audio Circuit Modder Ace, and you can learn more about it on Retro RGB, linked in the description below. While the original Famicom is the correctly balanced reference console, it only outputs RF, which results in poor quality audio. The later revisions of the Famicom are drastically altered, and the AV Famicom has an entirely new circuit design, both of which result in poor audio mixing that ruins the original intent. The Japanese region Castlevania 3 is often used as a demo of the Famicom's expansion audio capabilities, so let's take a listen to the original revision Famicom with an audio output mod. Now, Listen to a stock AV Famicom. Could you tell that the mixing circuit is mismatched with the drums almost completely drowned out by the synth track? Finally, here is the AV Famicom with an NES RGB and ACES audio mod. With that out of the way, let's talk about the mod itself. It will of course require Tim Worthington's NES RGB, and this list of parts that you can purchase as a kit from Console 5, and I'll also link that in the description below. So you can either perform this mod after the NES RGB is installed or before. Uh, I'm opting to do it before because I just find it a little easier to work on the loose parts before they're installed because we do have to do modifications on the NES RGB and we have to delete some components from the AV Famicom mainboard. So it's really up to you on whatever you're comfortable with. So let's focus on the AV Famicom's mainboard. We need to remove five components. First is resistor R3, which is right here. Next is resistor R4, which is right here. Then we have resistor R14. We have capacitor C2, which is this ceramic disc style capacitor. And finally, we have capacitor, this is C3 right here. I do want to provide some clarification here and some correction. In Council 5's recap instructions, they call out the electrolytic capacitor as C3, but in actual fact, it does appear to be C1. In any case, it's the two ceramic disc capacitors that we need to remove, not the electrolytic capacitor. So let's get to it.
look at that. Fantastic. We've removed R3, R4, R14, C2, and C3. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. So on the BU3266 chip, which is right here, uh, U3 on the board, we need to lift pin 17 down in this corner right here. It's this final pin. And we also have to short out pin 15 and 16, which is right here and right here. It's easiest to short these out in the back side of the board, so that's what we're going to do. So first, we're going to take our flush cuts, and we're going to get on pin 17 right here. Come in from the side, it's a little bit easier. Just give that a little snip. There we go. Perfect. And just lift that up, make sure it's not making contact with the board. There we go. Now we flip this around. And the two pins that we want to short, again, 15 and 16. So this one here and this one right here. So let's grab some solder and our soldering iron. Just like that. Fantastic. So at this point, we can move on to the NES RGB and the modifications we have to make to that board. Great news, it's finally time to open up our NES RGB. What a masterpiece. We're going to take this pristine brand new board and we are going to modify it. We need to make a few modifications to this board. Two components are going to be completely removed, and four components are going to be replaced. Three of these are going to be bridged. So let's go ahead and mark the components that we are going to remove. So we are removing this, 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 this guy here, right here, that one, this one, and this one. Now I find the easiest way to take these components off is to just grab our soldering iron, grab a little bit of solder, and just bead right over these, just like this. Big glob of solder right around that component, see, and it comes right off, just like that.
we have three paths that we have to bridge. We have to bridge this one here, this one here, and this one here. This one is going to stay open. I find one of the easiest ways to bridge these components is to use one of our stripper tools, and a small piece of solid, not stranded wire. Let's just take some of that off. Just like that. We can now take the solid wire, approximate the length of our jumper. It doesn't have to be perfect. The solder will close any gaps and cut that down. There we go. Just like that. Let's solder in our next two jumper wires. And the last one. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see, just like that. So let's go ahead and open up our bag of parts from console 5 and remove these resistors and the capacitor. Now they are color coded. So we have a 15K brown resistor, 20K red resistor, 100K green, and the one microfarad is blue. And you can see here that each little item is color coded. Now I'm only going to do this one at a time because if they get mixed up, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, so let's start uh, first off with the 100K resistor, which is green. Uh, because that is the one in the bottom left. These are incredibly small components, so you need to have a gentle hand. And I've, I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so let's see how this goes. There we go. We have a successful solder joint. Next up, we have our 15K resistor right here, which is color-coded brown. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Take your time, relax. If you feel that uh, you're getting frustrated, go for a break and come back.
it is. Let's tackle the one microfarad capacitor next, and that's our blue. Finally, we have our 20K, which is red. Nice work. So we've successfully completed the modifications to the NES RGB. To summarize, we installed a jumper, another jumper, a jumper, left this open, 100k ohm resistor, 15k ohm resistor, open, one microfarad capacitor, and then finally, 20k ohm resistor. And there we go. We've successfully deleted the components on the AV Famicom mainboard. We've lifted pin 17 on the BU3266 chip and shorted out 15 and 16. We've completed our modifications on the NES RGB. And at this point, we're ready to install the NES RGB onto the AV Famicom. Now I'm going to do that in my next video, but there are a few things that you need to know for this audio rebalance mod when you're installing the NES RGB. Some of the connections, they land a little bit differently, so let's spin this around and I'll show you what you're looking at here. For one, our audio connections, so CPU pin 1 to NES RGB A, CPU pin 2 to NES RGB B. With our audio input out of the way, we can move up to audio output and we can connect that to pin 45 on the cartridge connector, and that's located right here. It's this guy right here. Uh, and that will go to O on the NES RGB for audio out. And we'll also need a ground for that. We can use this pin right here for ground. Uh, if you're using a shielded cable, which is recommended, you can just simply ground the shield to that terminal right there. 
And that concludes the audio balance restoration mod video. I hope you join me for part three. Thanks for watching.